Would you like to work closer to home, save money on gas, and be rewarded for your hard work and attendance? Then Belicio Foods is looking for you. That's right, Belicio Foods is now hiring for multiple positions and shifts with great employee benefits, an on site health clinic, competitive wages, and advancement opportunities. Belicio Foods is a company that truly values their employees. Apply online at Beliciofoods.com slash careers. This just in. The Telegram News has a new website. TheTelegramNews.com. Same dedicated coverage. Same trustworthy news with a brand new look. Covering Jackson and Benton County and surrounding areas. Locally owned and operated, TheTelegramNews.com has its finger on the pulse of the community. Stay up to date on local events, high school sports, and breaking news. TheTelegramNews.com. Subscribe today at thetelegramnews.com. Check it out. Well, happy Monday, everyone, and welcome to the morning show right here on Main Street TV. Of course, Jennifer here with her good friend Pete Wilson because it's Monday and that's when we do the morning news update, and it's always fun to catch up with you over uh, after the weekend because there's always a lot to do, Pete. And uh, did want to thank our good friend Nia Henry for um, sponsoring the morning news update. If you have any real estate needs, questions, anything like that, give Nia a call, 740-418-4135, and she will be happy to help you out. Pete, yes. busy weekend. Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> it always is. Did you get your hair cut, Pete? I got I got my ears lowered, yeah. Did you? Yes. You look so nice, Well, thank Pete. you very much. It, uh, uh, I always let it get longer than I like. You know, it's hard to control and like that. So I I, I'm like just glad I got it. Thing. still got it up there. Well, my husband's too cheap to like go t- pay anybody to like cut his hair. So I have to cut his hair. Oh my, you have, that's great trust. Which you, is, you have, isn't it? You have, you have something sharp in your hands and everything. I know. Oh my. And okay. clippers. Okay. Well, he must be a good husband to yeah. put you in that situation. Yeah. I don't know what he's thinking, but right. anyway. <laughs> okay. So yeah. So I always, his hair always gets really long too. I think it's a guy thing. Right. Okay. We all girls right. like to go get our hair done. But. Okay. All right. Well, maybe you can give him your curls sometime. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I have some to spare. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, there is a lot to talk about. You are yeah. correct. And, uh, you know, we're going to start off with football and veterans. Okay. Right? Because they were very, very much in the headlines uh, throughout the weekend. Uh, of course, uh, the football game. Everybody, mm-hmm. most everybody knows uh, on Friday night, uh, it was a great football game between the Jackson Ironmen and the Bishop Watterson Eagles, a uh, Division Three Region Eleven semifinal game. And a uh, great game. Didn't end the way we wanted, yeah. but that's football. Got to remember, we've talked about this. At the end, there's going to be one team in each division left standing out of all those football teams in the that's state, right. hundreds of football teams. And uh, the Ironmen went pretty deep into the playoffs. And, uh, you know, if it weren't for, you know, just chance, a few things could have happened the other way. We might be playing again Friday. but. Mm-hmm. It was uh, went down, went down, uh, went down to defeat, uh, uh, playing well and mm-hmm. giving yourself a chance against a, a big Catholic school from Columbus. Uh, the final score: Bishop Watterson twenty four, Jackson twenty two. Mm-hmm. Game started off uh, couldn't have started off better. Uh, Jackson got the football, drove all the way down the field, did a two point conversion. Yes. Cade Wolford scored both of them. That's our outstanding junior running back. So up eight to nothing. After that, we found out that Watterson uh, is a pretty daggone good football team. We knew they would be. It's just how good. Well, uh, they've only lost one game. Jackson had lost two coming into the games. Uh, they played Watterson had played uh, a tough schedule, just like Jackson. Mm-hmm. Watterson scored a touchdown to make it eight to seven. They kicked the extra point. Sure. They they uh, Jackson did not score the second time they had the ball. Watterson did, so they're up fourteen to eight. So good ball game. Both teams played better defense in the second quarter. Started out in the third quarter. Watterson had the ball because Jackson got mm-hmm. the got the opening kickoff. That's when a real dagger went through Jackson's chest. Uh, a kid by the name of Rudinsky, who happens to be the son of an Ohio State linebacker. I was going to say, I know that name. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. He ran the kickoff back 88 yards for a touchdown. Ouch. And they kicked the extra point. And so it's 21 to 8. And Watterson, frankly, had been out playing Jackson since Jackson scored that first touchdown. Mm-hmm. 
They were gaining yards in the air and on the ground that we had not been used to giving up. And we weren't, we had not scored since that first touchdown drive. Right. So uh, then we got a great gift. Um, and we, you know, we earned it, but we got a great gift when Watterson had the ball deep in its own territory. And the center uh, snapped the ball on a shotgun snap. Shotgun meaning the quarterback is not right behind the Correct. center. He's farther back. They almost all do it that way because it's easier to pass. Snapped it over the quarterback's head. He wasn't even looking for it. Ball goes into the end zone. Landon Camp, who is one of our outside linebackers, jumps on the ball before it goes out of the end zone. The difference there is it's a touchdown rather than a safety. Six points instead of two. Right. We uh, go for two points again. Jacob Winters finds Cade Wofford in the end zone. Suddenly, instead of 21 to 8, it's 21 to 16. Ball uh -huh. game on. Yes. Right. And so it went uh, all the way into the fourth <laughs> quarter. Uh, you know, both teams moving the ball a little bit, but neither scoring. Watterson, uh, uh, after a short Jackson punt, got the ball deep in Jackson's territory. And we're showing some scenes from the game there. Uh, Watterson got the ball uh, deep in Jackson territory. <coughs> the Jackson defense put up the stop sign. Had a big sack, forced Watterson to kick a field goal. Uh, a kid by the name of Kessinger kicked a 38-yard field goal, and in in warmups he was hitting him from 50 yards. So it was not a surprise to see him sure. hit from 38. But as it turned out, this was the difference in the game. It came with five minutes uh, plus to go in the game. It put Watterson up 24 to 16 because Jackson had scored the two extra point conversions twice, had 16 instead of 14. If they could score another touchdown somehow and get the two-point conversion, it would be a tie game. So Jackson uh, got the ball deep in its own territory after the kickoff, drove down the field, got down, uh, got down inside the 20-yard line. We're running out of time, less than a, a minute to go. Yeah. Uh, and they score on a two-yard run by Eli Broerman with 39 seconds left. Waterson 24, Jackson 22. Of course, you're going to go through the two-point conversion. Isn't this how a playoff game should Coach go, Pete? Andy, <laughs> Andy Hall, you know, in a post-game interview, and I think he, you know, he talked with the with the uh, newspaper media too on this. He kind of had a play in mind all along if we had that opportunity, and it involved Eli Broerman, who is a fullback coming out of the backfield and you know throwing it to him in the flat. Well, Winners, Jacob Winners, who is our uh, you know quarterback, uh, gets the shotgun snap. Sees Broerman running. It's not an easy play because Broerman is running into the end zone trying to you know, get away from the Watterson defense, and Winters has to lead him. Winters throws a pass just over Eli's head, just over Eli's head, stretched out for it, couldn't quite get it. Didn't, uh. I don't think he even got his hands on it, but it was close. The ball hits the ground, 24 to 22. Jackson's only chance is to recover an onside kick, which doesn't happen very often. Sure. They tried an onside kick. The ball went nine and a half yards and went out of bounds, which means that Watterson gets the ball right there. No chance to recover it. So uh, that's the way it ended. Watterson 24, mm. Jackson 22. Statistically, the game was about even. Jackson actually had a few more yards than Watterson, uh, but that kickoff return was big. Uh, not getting the two-point conversion, of course, that would have forced an overtime Absolutely. game probably. Uh, they would have kicked off to Watterson, but Watterson wouldn't have had a lot of time to do anything. And, you know, who knows what's happening there. But Watterson now will advance to the finals of the regional. This was Jackson's goal to get to the regional final and maybe win it. It's never happened in school history. We've been to two regional finals. This would have been extra special because there's more teams in the playoffs we would have had to uh, win three games to get to the regional finals, Correct. which we have never won three playoff games in one season. So That's pretty um, cool. Jackson ends up 10-3, and three, great season. As I said here on Friday when we were talking about the season and the prospects for the Watterson game, uh, I believe that this Jackson team played the toughest schedule that I can ever remember yeah. in Jackson High School history. And so uh, it's quite a compliment, you know, that you finish 10-3, and three, that you reach the regional semifinals. You're playing Columbus Bishop Watterson, who has a great pedigree. You know, this is a Catholic school, a parochial school that can recruit from all over the day. They sure can. Now, that's the truth. It's not yep. sour grapes. It's the truth. And they have four or five players, we're told, that have connections with Ohio State University. Usually the Catholic schools in Columbus, it kind of rotates around where uh, one is the it school, where mm -hmm. you know, the very best players go. 
30, they have 33 juniors on their team. Some football teams don't have 33 <laughs> players on their football team. They have 33 juniors, 12 seniors. They obviously should be very good uh, next, next year. year. Exactly. Yeah. A lot of their starting players were juniors. Wow. So they've kind of set themselves up. Oh, my. They have won two state championships. They've won seven regional championships just since the playoff format went. So this is nothing new for them. Although, on paper, Jackson was the second seed and Watterson was the third seed. Watterson will now play Bloom Carroll, which is a school outside of Lancaster. Bloom okay. Carroll defeated Sheridan 17-7 to in the other semifinal game. Whoever wins that game this Friday at 7 o'clock, it's going to be played at Columbus DeSales High School oh. Stadium. That that team will go to the state's final four. Wow. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure what the pairings will be there, but there will be only four teams left. There's seven regions in the state, and it's all based on enrollment, mainly enrollment, not specifically enrollment, mm -hmm. on you know which region or rather which division that you're in, and then they have the geographic regions. The other uh, area team, the, there, there's one other area team that is still alive, and that is the Iron Fighting Tigers. They have not been beaten. Remember, we lost to them 29 to 26 earlier in the season. Yeah. They're in Division Five. They will play Harvest Prep um, this Friday at Waverly High School. So that's oh. a game in the area. Yeah. Harvest Prep came from behind to beat Wheelersburg. Oh, or else okay. Wheelersburg and Ironton would have been playing again for a <laughs> regional championship, which is nothing new. No, right, big, exactly. Big, big Ohio River rivals there, so uh, they are the only team left. Nelsonville York also got beat by Bel Air on Saturday. That's another area team. That's the team that won the TVC Ohio championship. So we're getting down to where now in each region there's only eight teams left. Gotcha. But uh, but once again, a fabulous season for the Ironmen. I know you know uh, you can't be more disappointed. On Friday night, when you're, when you have to uh, process the fact that your season is finally over, yeah. and you had dreams and aspirations even beyond what you achieved, because this team had that kind of mindset. They did. They, they weren't afraid of anybody. They were going to put their best foot out there, and they just ran into a team that was just a little bit better than they were that night. You know, and and you're exactly right. And we've talked about this off the air, I think, but. Uh, you know, there are times when you can, you know, you just put these two teams together five times and it could it could end up anyway. No, this you know, that seemed it was, like they were pretty matched up. It was that kind of game. It was supposed to be close and it, that's how it turned out. That's how you how those games should be. Right. But give Watterson credit. They were able to do some things against the Jackson defense that other teams had not been able to do coming into this game. And uh Watterson even though uh, they were a young team, had been on a big roll, just like Jackson had been. So people were uh, speculating that it would be a very, very close game. And, of course, it was. Sounds like it. Uh, we are going to have, uh, uh, first of all, as far as coverage, uh, I know a lot of folks maybe weren't able to go to the game. Uh, they were interested, and maybe they heard on the radio. Maybe they got the live stream from the JHS media team. But we have some outstanding coverage that is already posted on our Telegram website. Yep. Brock Netter's story is there. He quoted, uh, you know, Coach Andy Hall. Andy Hall very generous with his time after that uh, tough defeat. We've got an interview with him. We've got statistics posted, official statistics from the game posted. We've got uh, a gallery of photos that Todd Compton took, mm -hmm. a couple videos posted there. Red Thompson Jr. was there. We were, we, we were there in force, and we've got good coverage. And this Saturday... It has already been decided we're doing a little tribute page to the Ironmen. Cool. It's going to have, you know, the scores of the season, the team picture. Uh, we hope to have some advertising to support them that. It's a way for the sponsors and the community to, you know, give the Ironmen a final salute. Uh, that will be in this Saturday's paper. We need some time to get that ready, but you can be looking for that. Super and cool. And in the meantime, check out all of our coverage. Of course, it will also be in our print edition coming out on Wednesday. Um, also, uh, another thing that I wanted to, to talk about was uh, that the all-district football list came out. Mm -hmm. uh, this is where uh, you know players from all over the area, including our local teams, players, individual players are considered for uh, all-district. And then, if, you know, if you get to be all-district, you might have a chance to be all-Ohio. Well, one of the very top awards uh, on the all-district football team went to Jacob Winters, yep. our senior quarterback. He That's was so named. Good. There he is. There's Jacob right there. He is the 6'3", 225 pound quarterback, recruited by and with a full ride scholarship to nearby Ohio University. Yep. That is a big honor because a lot of times the Division One schools 
They want you to come, but they want you to come on your own dime. That's and earn right. Your, earn your way on. <laughs> they didn't do that with Jacob. They gave him the full ride, and he will be just up the road at Ohio University. I think he wants to be the quarterback. He is a very talented defensive player, too. So, I mean, he's, he's just such an athlete. And, you know? and he's big and fast, and he's, yep. he's been highly touted from the time he started his football career here at Jackson. But he was named the Offensive Player of the Year. Uh, wow, in, in Division that's awesome. Three in the district. That includes uh, all the southeastern Ohio region. Man. That means that he has a good chance for all Ohio honors at some level, <clears throat> and that will come out uh, here in the next several weeks as well. Super. We do want to uh, quickly mention some other players who, who were honored on that all-district team. Winners, by the way, I don't have the final numbers, even though I've <clears throat> already figured them up. I don't have them down on the paper in front of me. But he finished with nearly 2,000 yards passing this year. Holy moly. And, and this is when the team also has the ability to run the ball. And so later in the year, when the offensive line was playing real well and the weather wasn't so good, they ran the ball more than they passed. So he could have had even more yards mm -hmm. than that. Uh, he also added uh, nearly 400 yards on the ground. He had uh, 19 touchdowns and just five interceptions. I am sure, Jennifer, uh, we can't ever say this um, without any qual. We have to say this with qualification. There is no records for Jackson High School overall. Some things were kept individually throughout the seasons, but nobody have ever compiled them. Correct. Including me. Uh, Shame on you, Pete. Why well, didn't you do that? Well, I don't go all the way back to 1917, <laughs> you know, when they started. And, when you and, had you to know, ride your horse to the game? Right, right. I have partial Pete, Pete got started just a couple years after he just, that. He started a couple years <laughs> yeah, after that. A little, little bit. I've done some research in the early <laughs> years, but they're incomplete. But the bottom line is, I believe that based on the years that I do know and the fact how football has changed, it's more passing than running now, mm -hmm. more scoring than there used to be, I think I can safely say that Jacob Winters will be the all-time career leader in passing yards, completions and touchdown passes in Jackson High School history. And that is more than 100 years. And that is a great honor. Had some great football teams here yep. and great quarterbacks. So that's what I'm saying. You, there you until go. Somebody you heard prove, it from the until horse's mouth. Until somebody can prove me wrong. That's right. So uh, congratulations <laughs> to him. But, but some of the other folks who were honored, uh, Cade Wolford was also named first team all district. He is our junior running back. He mm -hmm. will be back next year yeah. to help lead the Ironmen. Uh, Coach Andy Hall was the uh, co-coach of the year in Division wow. Three, uh, along with uh, Paul Culver, who is the who is the coach at Sheridan, which was one of the top teams in the area too. So co-coach of the year for Coach Andy Hall. Uh, Wolford this year ran for over 1,400 yards, also uh, tied the team lead in uh, passing receptions and more passing yards than anybody, including any of the wide receivers. Uh, David Norris. Uh, one of our linemen made all district. Eli Broerman, who I've mentioned him, mm -hmm. our junior fullback, he made the team. Uh, Landon Camp made it as a linebacker. Of course, he had that big fumble recovery that gave Jackson a chance. Mm -hmm. um, for other teams in our area, in Division uh, Four, Vinton County's Garrett Brown, <clears throat> Isaac Mollahan, and Dawson Brown were all first team uh, for, for the Vikings for, in Division Four. Brown. In, in addition, was the co-offensive player of the year in the TVC. Nice. We've already mentioned that. We'll mention that again since we're going down these honors. Um, for Oak Hill, Evan Fisher, was uh, he was a defensive lineman. He was named to the first team All-Ohio. Now, Oak Hill didn't have a very good season record-wise, but Evan Fisher had a great season. <laughs> he recorded 44 tackles on the year, including 10 tackles for a loss. Whoa. And then also uh, Nate Clutter through Oak Hill was on the honorable mention list. Uh, that list, that story uh, was uh, was in our print edition on Saturday. I'm, I, I don't know whether it's online yet because of our deadlines. Uh, it wasn't allowed to be released until midnight on Saturday okay. or midnight on Friday, rather. So we couldn't post it on Friday night, but it is in the print edition, in Saturday's print edition. We will have it online if it isn't already. Yes. It is online. Wonderful. Okay. Excellent. Uh, and that will have, you know... Uh, that will have all the players, uh, local players listed there, mm -hmm. and plus the top awards all throughout the district. Okay, I want to mention, uh, since we're on sports, I'll, I'll wrap up with this. Two Jackson area residents were honored uh, by the district uh, by being named uh, Coaches of the Year for the district 
cross country honors list. Okay. And uh, one of them was uh, Emma Newsom. Uh, there is Emma on Good the job, left. Good job, Emma. And on the right is Doug Hughes. Doug Hughes. Good 19, job, Doug. Doug is a 1992 graduate of Jackson High School. Emma uh, is a 2016 Jackson High School grad. Emma, in her first year, mm -hmm. coached the Jackson High School boys and girls cross country team. They were much improved this year. And uh, she is a runner herself. Yes. And so congratulations to her for getting that honor in her very first year of coaching. Now, Doug Hughes, a lot of folks know Doug. He mm -hmm. uh, played sports when he was in uh, high school. He was a, a very good baseball player. Mm -hmm. He has coached and taught for years at White Oak High School, which is in our southeastern district, but over there on the western on the western end, all the way there in Highland County, I believe it okay. is. He has been one of the top cross country coaches in the whole area for quite some time. Yes. And he was named um, the uh, Division Three Coach of the Year. Nice. Uh, this is the third straight year that he has been the Coach of the Year. He has had teams and runners go deep into the cross country uh, meet tournament. You know, they have district meets, regional meets, and then if you're really good, individuals or teams can go to the state. This year, I know he had one individual at least that made the state. So, um, a lot of people may not That's know that awesome. because it's down the road, but Doug's been a very dedicated and successful coach. So congratulations to both Emma Newsom and Doug Hughes. All right. Veterans Day uh, was on Friday, of course. Mm -hmm. And I tell you what. Um, did you write that, Pete? <laughs> did, I, did, did I write this right here? Yes, I did. You don't have to read it. You don't have, boy, you don't miss, you don't miss an opportunity to make fun of me, do you? <laughs> Now you realize you realize I never make real, fun you, of you other you, than you your, real, your you realize you have um, you have thirty nine minutes yet to fill <laughs> and there's the door is not locked over there. So uh, I just feel like we should show people what it looks like. Yeah. Okay. Here we are. Can you see it? No, you can't really. Here, see it. Okay. I got to show it. Well, okay. I think we get the idea. Here. <laughs> now you know what I'm talking about. We <laughs> Hold me up to public ridicule. That's okay. I'm used to it. I'm in the news Hey, media. as long as the newsman can read his own writing, we're all in I, good shape. I, I can. But, but anyway, <laughs> as I was starting to say before I was rudely interrupted I'm sorry, and made Pete. fun of. To clarify, I thought you were a nice girl. I, I always, you know, I, do I make fun of you because you were the horse queen? No. no absolutely not. To clarify, I'm, I'm Pete. I'm in awe. I'm in awe of that. But Just anyway, to clarify, Pete, you can read your writing as long as not that much time has passed since you wrote it. <laughs> and when you look at it, I, I can't, yeah. I can't deny that. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I'm looking at it like, now, is that a B or a B? Or? <laughs> what did I? What was I writing about? Yeah. Okay. Oh, anyway, All right. well, we digress. Like Sorry. I, 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 I think I admitted this before. I almost didn't get out of elementary school because of the grades <laughs> on on handwriting. Okay. It kind of it kind of sunk me, you know, when the parents are going to give you an ice cream sundae or something if you get all A's or B's or whatever. <laughs> Poor the Pete. handwriting sunk me every time. <laughs> he never did get those. I was lines. so glad in seventh grade they didn't grade you on that anymore. Oh right. I all feel right. You. Okay. Well, anyway, speaking of Veterans Day again, <laughs> a lot of things in the schools either Thursday or Friday because some of the schools were out on Veterans Day because of the holiday. Yes. And then we had public ceremonies as well. I uh, wanted to remind you again that the Jackson Veterans Day ceremony that was supposed to be held at Veterans Memorial Park was yeah. not held because of the rain. It was it so is bad. It is considered canceled. I don't think it's going to be okay. rescheduled, but if it is, we will certainly let you know. But there were some other big ceremonies. One of the big ceremonies was uh, at Wellston High School. Uh, Philip Buffington was there covering that. We're going to have great coverage of that. Cool. But that is done by the Wellston High School National Honor Society. They make it a school-wide thing and a community thing, big attendance there. That is one of the pictures that we're going to be publishing, and we'll have names and all. Those are the uh, students at Wellston High School who were winners of the Americanism contest. Isn't that an appropriate time to it announce who sure they are? Is. But as you can see, those those uh, young students were Americanism uh, winners. Um, I'm going to read these names now, just so you know that I... <laughs> Speakers at the Veterans Day uh, ceremony in Wellston. <laughs> it was held in the gymnasium. Lots of people there. Brandon Witt, Doug Reed, our own Greg Milliken. Remember Greg? Yes. He goes the back old a ways man. with us here at the radio. And there Mark, he is. And Mark Foster. They were 
there's there's the old man there's the old man of rock and roll yes who is a proud veteran he sure sure. is but uh he was among uh the speakers and it was a big ceremony a big program with lots of good things going on and the best thing about it is the kids arranged it and they you know did the introductions and the organization the whole nine yards so we're going to have coverage of that coming in wednesday's paper and we will put it online as soon as we have that ready philip buffing is working on that right now Okay, we go back to Jackson, and on Thursday evening, I had, uh, I had, I felt uh, it was an honor to attend this. It was the Marines' birthday party. Yes, they always have it on November the tenth. Now Very you say cool. it's probably because of Veterans Day. It's just happenstance. The Marine Corps was formed on November tenth, seventeen seventy-five. Wow, that's before there ever was a Veterans Day. Mm-hmm. That's just when it is, and every year. All across the country, uh, there are local celebrations of the Marine Corps birthday party. And mm-hmm. there was one in Jackson. It was at the DAV. And there is a little symbolic thing that takes place at all these birthday parties. You see the birthday cake there. The youngest Marine and the oldest Marines cut the cake together. Oh, cool. And pose for a picture. And there they are. Uh, in this case, on the left is Quentin Lewis. Graduated from Oak Hill High School last May. He has made it through basic training. Way to go, buddy. Out of Paris Island. He is just now back home and was able to come to this. Uh, he'll be, uh, you know, going out to his regular training mm-hmm. after the basic training. I think maybe even this week. Uh, he is only 19 years old. Hmm. Those two veterans that are with him were the oldest ones who attended that, uh, that ceremony. Larry Zorns, age 80. Walter Yinger, age 80. Uh, Larry Zorns with the cowboy hat there right in the middle, and then Walter Yinger next to him. Both of them uh, are 80 years old. Their birthdays wow. within three months of each other, so they shared the honor of being the oldest, cool. oldest Marine. But they uh, played a recording of, uh, of the Halls of Mount Azuma, the Marines Corps hymn. Uh, you know, they did the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, you can see uh, that there is a bond, a very palpable bond, sure. a camaraderie among these Marine veterans, even though some of them may not have served together or even know each other. But uh, that's pretty they, cool. They, they, they've all had different experiences, but there is a bond there. I felt it as being a non-Marine and a non-military person. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, that picture was in our paper, uh, by the way, on the front page on Saturday. Up Vinton County Way, they had a lot of things uh, in the schools, just like they did here in Jackson County. Uh, But their big public ceremony was on Friday morning. Now, um, this is one of the pictures from West Elementary. Uh, That is where Red Thompson was on Thursday. They had the uh, programs on Thursday because school was shut down on uh, Friday because of the holiday. But anyway, that is Jim Satori who is uh, one of the veterans there. He is with one of the students there Mm. doing a flag folding demonstration, showing how that goes. And you can see uh, students in the background there. The whole student, uh, the whole student group was there uh, attending. And that is all the students there. Red took that picture uh, when they were singing God bless America. So, uh, (laughs) so, I like that girl's shirt. Yeah. You can, you can see, you can see that they're all singing there. They, they got into it. I think they did God bless the USA too. The famous Lee Greenwood song a little bit more (laughs) modern there, but, uh, the ceremony at, in front of the courthouse on Friday morning, did they have it? It wasn't raining at, it was supposed to start Mm -hmm. at like 11, Mm -hmm. but they were all there early between 10 30 and 11. The forecast said it was going to rain any minute, so they started it early. And oh, by cool. golly, they got it in. It may have started raining right towards the end, but they got in the outdoor ceremony in front nice. of the courthouse. This is the honor guard, the firing squad from uh, VFW Post 5299 in MacArthur, uh, standing at attention uh, during, the during I think, the Pledge of Allegiance. So they participated. Uh, Abby Owings sang the national anthem. Uh, Jim Salyer, who is the common police court judge, was the MC. Uh, Jim Satori, who we showed his picture there just at the school the day before, yes. he was the guest speaker. He's a veteran. Uh, he's a Vietnam veteran, talked about uh, what it means to be a veteran then and now. And so he gave a very nice speech. All this coverage will also be in our Wednesday edition. Red Thompson Jr. was there. I don't think he had an umbrella, but he braved it. <laughs> got, some, got some nice pictures for us. We will be putting that online as well. Cool. Once again, we know we urge you you know, if you're a subscriber, uh, to take advantage of our website, uh, the telegramnews.com, because, you know, when we get these stories ready for publication, you know, 
we come out Wednesday and Saturday in our print editions. We're going to go ahead and put many of these stories online so you don't have to wait to see them if you're a subscriber. All right, so that was Veterans Day. Uh, um, we'll go to the other news now, and there was lots of it to go through. Uh, on Sunday, early Sunday morning, the Wellston Fire Department was called out to uh, property off Charles Beerup Road. Charles Beerup Road is off State Route 32. Uh, you know, you're on your way to Athens there in Milton Township. Okay. And Charles Beerup Road is a little township road. And off that township road, there is an asphalt plant that Shelly and Sands had. I didn't even know that. You know, they do okay, a lot of paving yeah, in there, and they I got an asphalt plant. Didn't know uh, that I'm not either. sure exactly, you know, how big it is or whatever, but it's there. And on that property, they had a trailer. Somehow that trailer caught on fire over the weekend. Oh, no. A couple of deer hunters discovered it on Sunday morning. Uh, they called the fire department. Uh, Wellston Fire Department went. They had help them the Hamden Fire Department. But uh, Corey Ireland, who is with the Wellston Fire Department, told me, that they feel that it caught fire sometime well before the deer hunters saw the fire. Sure. And the trailer had almost burned uh, out and burned down by the time, you know, it was seen and the firefighters got well, there. Well, they're lucky it didn't spread all over the place. Nobody from Shelly and Sands was immediately there. And when I got my information yesterday, they did not even know what the contents were. But whatever was in there is lost. I mean, it was it's gutted. Gone. It yeah. was gutted. I'm not sure that it was used as an office or a tool trailer or both, but anyway, it was on the property there. Okay. It did not affect the plant or anything. Uh, huh. But if it's up a lane, you, uh, some people wouldn't know it's there. You might not even be able to see it right from the road. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I didn't go back to see myself, but uh, that was uh, that was one of the instances from the weekend. Uh, one of the other things I wanted to tell you since we're talking about fires, okay, we had all that rain over the weekend, right? Had all yes. that rain on Friday. Take it was it. a pain, but we needed it. Right, yeah, we needed it. But that Kimball Complex fire, that's the name they've given to that big fire in the Wayne National Forest down in Lawrence County. Yes. Well, guess what? It's still burning. Oh, it the, didn't help. The huh? rain did not the rain did not put it out. Uh -oh. uh, it has, you know, been contained to a degree. It's not necessarily under control, but it's contained. Um off State Route 93, all the roads are open, including telegraph. Telegraph Hill Road, which mm -hmm. is the closest road to where the fire is. They, hey, wasn't that where the cycle search key was? I'm pretty sure. I don't it was. know. It's in Lawrence County, uh, down Maybe the road not. from Jackson County a little bit. But that fire is uh, is is still going. Uh, they do request motorists who are driving on Telegraph Hill Road to stay away if they can. And if you go through, if you're driving on that road, you need to drive because you live there. You're driving through. Just be careful because, uh, you know, there may be some smoke yeah. and as well as firefighting uh, trucks and equipment there. Uh, there are no flight restrictions in the area due to smoke, no evacuations or closures. But I thought it was worth reporting that that, that fire is, is still not out in spite of the that rainy weather. That just goes we to had, show you how powerful they are. Right. And now the cold weather. I'm sure that it helped. 1,337 acres. Man. Think of that. 1,337 acres. 15% uh, of it is considered contained. It started on November the 8th. They still don't know how hmm. it started. But uh, I had, uh, there have been 97 firefighters that have fought it along the way. But I never remember uh, something that uh, an old fire chief told me. I believe he's passed now. He used to be the uh, fire chief at Colton. Mm -hmm. Name was Marvin Deck. And there was an outdoor fire that was pretty bad near Colton that they fought. And this probably maybe 10 years ago. And uh, and I asked, how do they know what caused it? And he says, well, we're not really sure, but we know squirrels don't smoke. <laughs> I mean, that, that was, That's true. That was his way of saying that probably uh, human carelessness uh, of course. Was, was the cause there. A campfire, who knows, just a cigarette right. ash. Whatever. But you think about in those 1,100 acres that have that have burned already, um, you know, the wildlife habitats and things like that, that not only pr people's properties, but, mm -hmm. you know, what's, what that's doing for wildlife and, and other things as well. Um, it really disrupts the ecosystem <laughs> quite a bit. No, it really, it, it really does. And uh, in some cases, you know, it's actually a way to renew the forest. They do have controlled burns. Sure. They have them every year, even in the Wayne National Forest. You know, yeah. you think, oh, my God, there's a forest fire. You wonder how sometimes 
you know, you start a fire on purpose and other times you don't, <laughs> it's the, this worst, is not thing. One it's, we it's asked the for. worst thing that could happen, <laughs> yeah. especially if it gets to where, you know, there's personal property and yeah. so forth. All right, real quickly, we have so much more to cover. Uh, good news from uh, the Vinton County Health Department. Uh, they reported at the last commissioner's meeting that the health department has received a $300,000 grant from the National Association of City and County Health Districts. And this will be to implement an overdose prevention strategy program. We all know that overdoses are a problem everywhere, yeah. whether you're in the city, in the country, in our Appalachian Hills. And this will help uh, get out the word on that. Only 15 grants all across the country and the Vinton County Health Department one uh, was one of them. Nice. Uh, it will uh, have various strategies, methods, and procedures to uh, uh, approach the problem of drug overdoses and to, uh, to uh, try to prevent them, to mm -hmm. try to control them uh, through the health department. We'll give you more information on that as we see how they are going to use that money. That's wonderful. Red Letter Day uh, Wednesday for the Vinton County Senior Citizen Center. They are going to finally reopen for live activities. Woohoo! They, they have continued to operate for the most part through COVID, but the center has been closed mainly due to COVID. Right. But now the center in Vinton County, it's been reopened in Jackson County for some time in most other places, but in Vinton County, the center will be reopened for the congregate activities there and, and events there at the center. Uh, the center is located in the Vinton County Community Building there on the north end of MacArthur on State Route 93. Wednesday is the day. I'm not sure there's going to be like any big celebration, but I know Man, the, mood, be nice. the mood will be celebratory. Yes. You know, they do the congregate mills there. But even, even when it was closed, they still did transportation services. They still did, uh, you know, the grab-and-go meals. You could come and pick up a meal. And okay. they also had the transportation services mm -hmm. to deliver meals as well. So that will be big for them. Jackson City Council meets tonight. Okay. Um, it will be the first time in three weeks the way the calendar felt. They meet the second and fourth Monday. So we had five Mondays in October. So a little bit of a break there. Uh, one of the things that they discussed at the last meeting and may come up tonight is how to handle the mowing and weed eating at Fairmont Cemetery. As you know, Jennifer, all us locals know, big cemetery, 16,000 graves there. A lot. It's big, big. The last couple years, they've had trouble getting the work done. They have uh, paired the staff at the cemetery. They think they have been able to do that to be efficient. In the summer and the spring and into the fall, when they need extra workers because of the mowing and the weed eating, it's a big job. They've hired seasonal workers. It always used to be a plum thing, you know, if you were on college or, or even if you were just looking for a second part-time job, there were a lot of demand for those jobs. Are you surprised to hear now they can't get people to take them? No. Okay. Well, that was a problem last year. Yeah. I think it was a problem the year before, too led to some less than desirable conditions there in the cemetery sure. for a while there when it got into the summer. Uh, I know that they, they tried their best. They upped the pay, I think, for the seasonal workers, still couldn't get enough. So now they're talking about the possibility of contracting out the mowing and weed eating work. All okay. Right? And so they did, get, they did get three bids that they uh, talked about at the last council meeting. And I don't know whether you're surprised at these figures, but they ranged from $188,000 to $328,000. Whoa. Not exactly your neighborhood boy mowing your lawn, right? Whoa. But, you know, you're talking about... But a, it's a huge cemetery. Yeah, you know, you're talking about, you know, that mowing and weed eating when the staff was doing it, you know, two or three people and maybe extra during the summer and spring. Mm -hmm. It's going on all day, you know. Oh, so, yeah, for sure. So now they are considering those bids. Um there, I think there's a little bit of a disagreement on council whether this is the way they need to go or they just need to make it happen with the existing staff. Okay. Whether, you know, you would increase the staff maybe or keep trying with the seasonal workers. Mm -hmm. And so that is one of the issues that is, uh, you know, they're talking about at the uh, sheriff's office. All right. Uh, in the village of Colton, at the last meeting, Jeremiah Shaver does a good job covering uh, the village of Colton for us. Uh, one of the things that happened there was that they voted, council did, on the recommendation of Mayor Kim Milliken to end their contract with the Jackson County Sheriff's Office. To improve the law enforcement coverage in Colton, they actually paid the Sheriff's Office money each year for a deputy to be dedicated to Colton for a certain amount of hours. Oh, okay. 
they have felt that recently they're not getting um, they're not getting the results that they want. It's very it's been very expensive to have that contract. Okay. When you have other costs, other needs in the village, and they made an important decision to not renew that contract with the sheriff's office. Now that does not mean that the sheriff's office will not cover Colton. They will, but sure. it's part of the big picture instead of uh, a you know, dedicated uh, instead of and and. and the deputy that was assigned to Colton could also do other things if there was emergencies and all like that. It's right. just that they committed to a certain number of hours in Colton to control crime, to have a presence, to slow down the traffic through Colton, that kind of thing. Does Colton have its own police department? They used to. That's what I thought. They used to. They used to have I a, can remember driving through Colton one time with a friend and getting pulled over. I wasn't driving. Okay. I've but been, I, I remember I that. I got pulled over once on the way to a Jackson Wellston football game. <laughs> But this is, that was the sheriff's office then. Oh, I this a, was a, I remember it was like a Colton. Right. So um, that it, we did work to slow the traffic in Colton for sure, because, you know, you could see them parked there. But the village marshal, that was why uh, when they lost the last village marshal to another job or whatever, I'm not exact, I can't even remember the circumstances okay. or who it was. They decided to go that route because it was so hard to maintain a person who would be the village marshal and maintain a vehicle for that person. Right. So, you know, they put it in the, in the hands of the sheriff. And I know for quite a while they were very satisfied, mm -hmm. but they've decided now uh, to forego that uh, in, okay. in the future. All right. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to uh, mention also, uh, we wanted to give uh, kudos uh, a salute to the atomic credit union, Okay. the atomic credit union, of course, uh, Based their uh, main office there in Pike County near Piketon, but they serve a number of counties, including uh, Jackson County offices in Jackson, Wellston, and Oak Hill. Mm -hmm. uh, they won a Compass Award that is given by the Ohio State Treasurer. Mm -hmm. and they won this. They won this. Uh, the Compass Awards commend organizations, programs, and individuals all over Ohio who are working to guide Ohioans toward financial literacy and empowerment. In the case of Atomic Credit Union, they are getting credit for their youth program, where they go into the schools to do financial literacy uh, programs. Andy Eisenogle does some of that yeah. work for Atomic Credit Union. And so this work, uh, this sacrifice, uh, this commitment has given uh, Atomic Credit Union uh, statewide recognition. They were one of several to be awarded during the month of November. That's Ohio Treasurer Robert Sprague, who cool. uh, is in charge of that. Also, um, we wanted to tell you about a couple of public meetings. Tonight, we mentioned Jackson City Council's mm -hmm. meeting. The Wellston City Board of Education is meeting at 730. Uh, all these public meetings, whether they are village council, city council, county commissioners, uh, school boards, we attend most of them in person to try to yes. get good public affairs coverage. Yes, you do. We might not be able to do all of them, but we try to be there. We watch them online if we can't be there. Right. We follow up with calls if we can't be there because, you know, we're stretched too far. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, we always want to let you know in the paper and on the website, on our social media when these meetings are because you have a right to go as well. They don't always get a big attendance unless there's something <laughs> going on to stir people up. Uh, but... Uh, uh, those are two of the meetings tonight that we'll be attending. I'll be at the Jackson City Council meeting. Phil Buffett will be at the Wellston School Board meeting. We have a couple meetings later in the week we want to tell you about because they've changed the date of the meetings. Okay. The Jackson County Commissioners normally meet on Tuesday. They will meet on Wednesday this time, 8.30 p.m. at their new location at the Job and Family Services building. All mm -hmm. right. Then this Thursday at 7 p.m., the Vinton County Local Board of Education will meet and that meeting will be at West Elementary School. Normally, they meet at the administration building in MacArthur, but sometimes they have meetings at the schools. This will be one of those times. So they're meeting at West, and in addition to that, their normal meeting time is 5 p.m., and it's the third Tuesday, which would be tomorrow. Don't know why, but they've changed the meeting to 7 p.m., and it's on Thursday this time. So we want to okay. let the public know that. Uh, Red Thompson, Jr. will be covering the Benton County Local School Board meeting. Uh, Phil Buffington will be at the commissioner's meeting on Wednesday. And then uh, on Wednesday, the Oak Hill Union Local Board of Education will meet at 4.30 p.m. Uh, at Oak Hill, Oak Hill Middle, Middle High School. They're in their library, and Jeremiah Shaver will be there. So we'll have a busy week keeping up with the 
uh, public affairs. Okay, question for you. Yes, ma'am. What is the difference? So Jamie and I were driving out. I can't remember where we were the other day. And we passed a group of schools. And one said intermediate. And he said, what's an intermediate school? And I said, I think that's the middle school. And then like five seconds later, we passed the middle school. And then the high school. And I can't remember where we were. And I was like. I think you were at Wellston. Because on Golden Rocket Drive, where the Wellston schools are, they are all all on the same property. But what's the difference between an intermediate school and a middle school? I thought that was the same thing. Not quite. The intermediate okay. school and the middle school are in the same building, but you saw you saw the lettering for both, right? Intermediate. No, it, it, it was not Wellston. It was somewhere else. Okay. Well, Wellston it was on doesn't. like a back country road somewhere. I don't know whether it, c- it could be someplace out of our area because that doesn't sound familiar. But in Wellston, if this is the same thing you saw, uh, Wellston intermediate is. Uh, is grades uh, three through five. The middle school is grades six through eight. Okay. And they are in the same building in Wellston, but in different wings. So it's intermediate would be younger than the middle school and so on and so forth, than the high school. And Bundy uh, Bundy at Wellston, which is in a different location, is grades K through two. (laughs) That's clear as mud. Well, thanks for clearing that up, Well, I don't know where you were, but that's how Wellston does it. That's how their divisions and nomenclature goes. Now, in Jackson, ele- elementary crazy schools are, are K through five. All three of them are K through five. Oh, I know where we were. We were in, um, we were delivering beer in um, Cincinnati. Okay. Well, and it was like, like kind of a rural area. Right. Can't comment on that. Yeah. Yeah. But that's that, where it, we were, It could though. be the very same division of Wellston. I'm guessing that intermediate is the bridge between the youngest kids and the middle school. Okay. All there right. you go. All right. Okay. Um, We've got to go into some softer stuff now. Okay. You like candy, don't you? Who doesn't like candy? Well, the Jackson County Women's Club, <gasps> formerly yes. the Linus Club, yes. is now uh, open. Well, no, it'll be open in 14 minutes. <laughs> uh, it opens at 10 a.m. at its new location, uh, which is at 14, 14 981 State Route 93. That is by Papa John's. I think maybe in the old bakery place. It is in the old Schwebel's bakery. Okay. Bakery. So this is a little bit different because typically they choose a downtown location, um, but it's a temporary thing. So it's just kind of like finding an open building that's you know, it, available. Any, any port in a storm, they've got a big sign that will help yeah. out there. Jackson, uh, Linus, or whatever. Candy just shop, candy. follow your nose to the good chocolate. It's a, it says candy <laughs> shop. But anyway, they open today. And they will uh, stay open uh, until the candy is gone or they're they're tired of selling. But it will be close to Christmas, at least. You can count on that. You got it. Uh, it'll be open Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And on Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., they'll have holiday candy, including m- many varieties of sugar-free candy. Mm-hmm. Yep. You can order some. Uh, they, they'll get it for you, you know, if you want a, a lot. Um, they have uh, numbers. Uh, I'll, I'll give you one of the numbers. Rhea Shoup is always one of the ladies out there. It's 740-286-6321. But if you're in or around Jackson or passing through Jackson, it is out there uh, just by Papa John's out there. Correct. Next to that shopping center Gillespie's where Mercado and, is yeah. and, and, and the old Gillespie's now called... Uh, something else. Yeah, something else. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Jackson something. We don't Jackson know. Food Mart. Jackson is that Food what Mart. it is? Maybe. Okay. maybe. Right. Hey, uh, does it say what kind of payment they accept? You know, it does not say. Uh, I was just now, wondering if it was. We're, we're sending uh, the, the staff all bid to be able to want to go out there and do the story, but they're going. <laughs> somebody is, somebody's going out this morning, so you know we can do a more in depth story with some visual photos and like that. Love that. And so uh, we will find out. But you know, when I have gone there, they take cash on the barrelhead. I know that. Oh, that's for sure. They're not going to uh, turn. And that you away. know, they may be at the point where, in the, the way the world is, it, they take plastic. But I can't say yeah. that. I think they do. That's why I was asking. Right, right. Okay, uh, this was this is a, a big time for the Jackson Food Program, uh, aka Jackson Food Pantry and Clothesline, down mm-hmm. at three twenty three East Broadway Street. Uh, they are having their Jackson Community Thanksgiving dinners. We said on television they before, are. but for the second or maybe third year in a row, it's going to be a takeout meal mm-hmm. because you know it's just not as easy to do. You know, COVID and so on the big sit-down meal that they used to do up at the high school on right. the night before Thanksgiving. 
but they're still doing it. 200 takeout Thanksgiving meals 200. are going to go out uh, free of charge. And they are taking orders through Wednesday. However, they were going to stop taking orders when they reached 200. And I talked to Nancy Basin yesterday, and she thought that by the time I went on TV, they would be out because they were down to 10. Oh, my. They were okay. down to 10. So you, it may be too late. Uh -oh. But I just wanted to let you know the main reason I'm telling you that is so if you haven't ordered, you know, you call as soon as you can. It opens. Uh, it actually opens the food program uh, at 10 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. I'm not sure if they'll take a call before then, but uh, you can call or drop by there at 323 East Broadway Street. Maybe you're lucky they'll have one or two or three left or whatever. But the, re the thing that she wanted me to put out was that they need donations to help pay for things. Okay, um, like monetary but, donations? Yes, monetary, monetary donations is, okay. is what she said. Now, maybe they take material donations as well because food is food. But the, the problem they had this year, they did get a lot of donations. Belicio gave them 200 turkeys. Wow. She had hoped to maybe use some leftover money to go buy more food to go above 200 if the demand was there. But they had to buy certain things that weren't donated, like... Um, uh, for instance, uh, a butter and eggs. And by the time that they bought the extra butter and eggs, it was about $2,000. Things are a little higher you uh, know, now. Oh, they are, yes. And so they have, they have no money on hand to buy more. And who knows, they may still need to pay off some bills or whatever. Okay. But she is asking, you know, through us here at the media, that they still need donations to help pay for what they're doing this year at the community Thanksgiving dinner, which is the community Thanksgiving takeout meal. Sure. Um, but if you want to make a donation, uh, you can call 286-5937, 286-5937. That is the food program landline number. Uh, or you can drop your donation off. Uh, I'm not sure what their mailing address is, so I won't say that. But you can drop a donation off if you're in Jackson. It's at 323 East Broadway Street, down mm -hmm. past Jamestown Market. Anytime that the office is open, Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, 10 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Okay. If you have already ordered your meal, and it's a full meal with all the trimmings, the frozen turkey and everything, mm -hmm. uh, plus some extra food items that they're throwing in, extra, right. very, very nice uh, box, the food box you're going to get. You're supposed to go to the Family Life Center of the Jackson Christ United Methodist Church, where on Monday, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., they will distribute these meals. Is that now, if you didn't pre -order, Today, Monday, or next Monday? Next Monday. Okay. Monday, November the 21st. Okay. The last day to order, technically, is this Wednesday, but like I say, she thinks she'll be out today. Sure. So, uh, if you did pre-order, it is 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Monday at the Family Life Center of the Christ United Methodist Church. And you will need to have an ID to prove that you really were the person who made the pre-order. Gotcha. All right. So that's another nice thing that's always gone on, on in Jackson. Another thing we want to remind you about, we just found out about this this weekend, but the Festival of Lights will be taking place at the Jackson Memorial Building uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. The Festival of Lights is the successor to the Festival of Trees. Yes. That were held for many years here in Jackson a fundraiser for the um, Jackson uh, unit of the American Cancer mm -hmm. Society. Uh, they were ready to end the project. The organizers had done it for many, many years. Um, uh, different bureaucratic uh, issues with the big cancer society. Mm -hmm. They just, it was hard to do and they were going to sure. drop it reluctantly. Well, the Jackson County Board of Aging took the baton instead. So they had one last year. It was the first time that the Jackson County Board of Aging did it. They changed the name to the Festival of Lights, but yep. it's still Christmas trees. It's That's the big thing, decorated Christmas trees. It's going to be this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at the Jackson Memorial Auditorium, where it cool. has always been. If they make any money, and they hope to, it will go to support the Jackson County Board of Aging and the Senior Citizens Program. So Love it's that. still a great cause. Uh, but... Um, the opening night gala is on Thursday. You need to have, uh, I won't say a ticket because you're not going to have tickets, but they're just going to have your name on a list that you paid or you can pay at the door. The simplest thing is just to pay at the door. Yeah. It's $25. It gets you in there uh, on the opening night to see all the trees before anybody else. You get a free dinner with it as part of it. And nice. then there is a auction. Uh, Patrick Ball, uh, one of our famous auctioneers in the county, will be there to uh, sell in a live auction, the trees, the wreaths, 
if they're centerpieces, there's going to be some senior citizen art as well. Cool. If you just want to see the trees and you're not interested or can't go to the gala, uh, there are two times that you can go to see the trees, and it's free of charge. Mm. Uh, it will be uh, on Friday from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m., and then on Saturday from noon to 4, no admission charge at all. And then also, uh, in connection with the Festival of Lights, on Saturday morning from 9 to 11, there's going to be a Santa's workshop. There'll be a breakfast, crafts, and a visit from Santa. So Woo! perfect for kids and their parents. Love that. That's and this always, is at the Memorial Building? This is at the Memorial Building okay. in Jackson, 145 Broadway Street. That's where the city administrative offices mm -hmm. are. You go in the side door there, and uh, it's the Memorial Auditorium. That's where it has been in recent years. Cool. Okay. Uh, also, later on uh, this weekend, another thing going on, uh, the Jackson High School Drama Club is going to present the Brothers Grimm Spectaculon Fawn. Spectaculon Fawn. I'm not sure I said that right. But it, <laughs> it's spectacular and it's like a marathon. Yes. So that you know what I'm talking about. Like a whole lot of stuff but, but what mixed it is, together. You can see the cast there and they're in costume. Kathy Lord always comes up with, uh, with very imaginative yes. uh, plays and they get the great costumes. And I'm always impressed by the number of kids that she gets out to be uh, in, in the play. But it's going to be, um, it's going to be, it will feature many stories collected by the brothers, Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm, the famous fairy tale Grimm brothers. And they take these tales, many of which we know, and they turn on their heads in what is described as a fast paced, rollicking ride with two narrators and several actors attempting to combine all 209 stories. Uh, classics such as Snow White, Cinderella, Hansel and Gretel, uh, all those things, including some ones you probably have never heard of. Sure. But they have kind of a comic bent on them, I guess. Okay. And so it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. Nice. There'll be three different performances. It's going to be uh, Friday, November 18th and Saturday, November 19th in the evenings at 7 p.m. Jackson Middle School Auditorium, not the high school, the auditorium at the middle school, and then Sunday at 3 p.m. Uh, you can get tickets in advance uh, online or at the school, or you can get tickets at the door. The advantage of getting tickets in advance is there's it is reserved seating. Okay. All right. And we do have a story about the uh, play online, and it was in our paper on Saturday. Love it. Want to give a quick shout out to Joy Henderson and the Viking Players. That is the drama club in Benton mm -hmm. County. They've already had their fall, their their fall presentation. It was called "Till Death Do Us Part." It was a comedy. Red Thompson Jr. Was that doesn't there. sound like a comedy, does it? No, no. Well, it was. It was. It was kind of a murder mystery type gotcha. angle. But here were some of the people who were involved in that. It was last weekend. They had it on a Saturday evening, and they made it a dinner theater format. And uh, Red really enjoyed it. He didn't go. He went through a rehearsal, not the dinner theater, but he did. Gotcha. He did enjoy it. So, uh, congratulations to them. We received uh, news late last week about the Christmas parade in downtown Jackson, mm -hmm. all the Christmas, uh, pre-Christmas celebrations that I know of, the main things in our local communities are all going to be on that first Saturday of the month, Saturday, December 3rd. The Jackson County Gear Grinders will do the parade here in Jackson. It will start, uh, lineup will be at 6 p.m. on Broadway Street in front of the library. Uh, then it will uh, take off uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, on Broadway Street, turn on Main and go out to Manpower Park where there will be activities out there. I presume we'll have Christmas decorated Christmas trees out mm -hmm. there that Barbie MacArthur does some other activities out there as well. And so that is uh, on Saturday the 3rd. If you want to participate in the parade, uh, anybody can do it. Business or groups wishing to participate should contact Tom Long. Uh, he is the manager down at the, uh, down at, uh, at the, at the, um, what's that place down there? Filling station. The filling station, right. Um, new ownership there, but the filling station, uh, he's the manager down there, uh, Main and Bridge Street. You can go see him or call him. There is no entry fee, but they would like to know who wants to participate. You can have candy, but they don't want you to throw it because of liability. Okay. All right. Also this weekend, speaking of uh, other good charity things, the Ladle of Love uh, program, this is the fourth mm -hmm. year that that program, which does uh, monthly meals that uh, they do take out meals, and they also do delivery service throughout the county uh, to people who need it, um, who are alone or uh, in need. Uh, they're going to do their fourth annual Thanksgiving lunch this Saturday at the Good Shepherd Wesleyan Church. And uh, 
that will uh, that will take place. Uh, that, that church is located on Chillicothe Pike, just west of Jackson. It will be served at 11:30 a.m. You can do dine-in, you can do takeout, uh, you can do delivery if you're already on their delivery list. Okay. The meal will consist of homemade chicken and noodles, mashed potatoes, vegetable roll, and homemade dessert. Christina Inbody is uh, the good deed doer that does yeah. that. She works at the Good Shepherd Wesleyan Church now, and that is a ministry that she's done, a goodwill project that she's done now for several years. She did it at a time when it seemed like it was needed in the community, and it touched her heart so much, sure. and the need was there that she just keeps doing just it. keep on. So good, good for her. Yes. All right. Uh, another thing I want to tell you about, uh, this is so cool, uh, Jennifer, because I know we're all wildlife people. James Hamilton over there is a great a bird photographer. He is. Well, the Jackson Lions Club is offering a calendar for sale that uh, features local birds and butterflies. Nice. Look at that. Look at that calendar so cover pretty. right there. Is this there. what we have here? No, that's a different. That's, or is that... that's, the, that's the Hope Haven calendar. Oh, okay. We're going to get to that. I think we're going to hear about that yes. later. But the Lions Club, um, Donald Altoff, who is one of the leading members of the Lions Club, um, I'm, not, uh, I'm not sure. He has been an off. He is the president now. I just looked at my yes. notes. But anyway, he's the photographer. It features a lot of birds in the area that we know. You see the bluebird there. I know the cardinal is there. The monarch butterfly mm -hmm. is there. Uh, but they're selling these calendars as a fundraiser. Perfect Christmas type gift. Oh, because everybody needs a calendar. It's win win. <laughs> Proceeds from this fundraiser will go towards sponsoring another Jackson High School student college scholarship and supporting the Ohio Lions Eye Research Foundation. The calendars cost $20 each. You can order uh, on email uh, or call. I'll give you the number because the email is too long for you to remember or write down here on TV. The number to call is 384-4109. That is a 740 number. I'll say it again. 740-384-4109. Payment is not due until you actually get the calendar. Okay. Orders must be received by this Sunday, November the 20th. All right, get on it. We have this story online, uh, and we've had it in the paper too. If you want to go back and check that, just, uh, just call up our website and get all the information there. Perfect but, Christmas gift. Right, exactly. Uh, this... Sunday, November 20th, also at 7 p.m., the First Baptist Church of Jackson will be the site for the annual community Thanksgiving service. Mm -hmm. That's something that Jackson Ministerial Association does. It's ecumenical, but it's a chance for members of the community to come together uh, as one to yeah. uh, give their thanks uh, to God right before the Thanksgiving holiday. This year, once again, 7 p.m. Sunday at the First Baptist Church, the Good Shepherd Wesleyan Church pastor, Steve Bowen, will be uh, the speaker. They will take a free will offering, uh, and those proceeds will be divided among the Jackson County Homelessness Committee, the Jackson Food Pantry, and the Good Samaritan Fund. And uh, Janie Carr wanted me to say that on TV, and I do what Janie wants. That's right. All right, I know we'll hear from John Pelletier tomorrow, yep. but the bottom line about the Rock for Tots concert coming up um, coming up uh, this Friday mm -hmm. at the Marquet Theater, they have a few tickets left. So okay, it's not get too, on it. Not too late to get on to get in on that. We also want to uh, congratulate the new pastor of the First Baptist Church in Wellston. They had an open house there for the public to meet him. That is Nate DeRoche. His wife is Riley. She was there as well. Cool. Uh, that that uh, open house was two to four last Saturday. The Baptist Church in Wellston is located at 204 South Pennsylvania Avenue. And back to veterans for one last thing. The Jackson First Church of the Nazarene will hold its monthly free breakfast for veterans. They do it every month, just okay. not in November. It will be at 9 a.m. at 251 Powell Drive. That's where the church is. The breakfast will be in the church's gym. It's open to all military members, active military personnel, and their families. And when is that? It is the third Saturday of each third month, Saturday. and that okay. is this Saturday. Okay, this Saturday. 9 a.m., First Church of the Nazarene. All right. Well, Pete, thank you so much. All right. We appreciate you spending your morning with us. That's and okay. Filling us in on all the, all that's going on in the community and, uh, you know. Right. So, so, so. You've heard this whole thing. Don't ever tell me there's nothing going on in uh, these two no. counties. And we don't ever tell lot. me there's not a reason to read the newspaper to find out about them. That's right. And don't ever make fun of Pete Wilson's handwriting ever again. Okay. Well, I, <laughs> I, I have a feeling that you've set a pattern on that. 
I'll have to come in here without any handwritten notes. I have to admit. You are so sharp. You see him even if I try to keep him away from you. <laughs> He's like, dang it, she saw it again. Just kidding you, Pete. We love you. Um, all right. So thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. Thanks to Pete and all the gang for the news. And uh, we will be right back here tomorrow with more latest and greatest from our area. So until then, have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. Bye.